Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a brand new release of Unity. This is a beta release. Do not use this in production. Trust me, I'm finding this one a little bit buggier than I normally find them, but again, it's going to vary from machine to machine, person to person, but my own experience so far has been interesting. But there's actually quite a bit in this release. The most recent Unity releases we've seen, 2021.1, for example, was more about, you know, compatibility, making things perform better, more stability, uh, moving things into the package manager, making it so that packages work better together, that kind of stuff. Stability things, things that Unity has desperately needed. Well, this one, we're back on the feature train. So we're adding new features and functionality to the world of Unity. And one of the big things we're going to start with is this new UI feature. So what you're seeing here, this is the new overlays. So what you've got here is the ability to float toolbars over the editor. Probably the biggest change here. Also, probably in my humble opinion, the buggiest. I've actually had this bug out, so I had no UI at all until I shut down and restarted Unity. So be aware, if this all goes away, that's why. But you've got control over it up here, overlays, and you're going to see here prefaults, presets, and you can go back to defaults at any particular time. Now you're going to notice there are a number of different options in there, orientation tools, component tools, view options. We'll put search back in there. So we now have a search option right here, which by the way, search has been getting a lot of love as well. Um, but we've got, you're noticing they're all kind of in different spots where well, we can float anything. So we can pull this off and have this floating over. Uh, we can take any particular one that we work on and change it to a vertical layer like so. Uh, we can... Uh, hook them together. I think those will be hooked together now. No, no, it's slotting to the side there. So that's snapping to the side. Uh, and you can snap them back over this way. And again, at any particular time, if you want, uh, you can toggle something off. So again, if I don't want search, I can just go ahead and get rid of it. If I do want search, I can bring it back right here. And so, and if I want to float search, if I use it all the time, again, just tear it off and put it there. And we got, we got the ability to take any one of these things and we can turn it into panel or otherwise, whereas these ones, you can actually do uh, horizontal, like so, vertical, or panel. So you have three different options for all of them, except for search for some reason, it only has two. I don't know why, but, and again, at any particular time, you can go back to the default. Another thing you can do is save presets, or you can save your presets to a file and share them with someone else, load them from a file, etc. and boom, you're back to normal. So if you like the idea of having overlays over top of your UI, you can customize it, have just the stuff available in floating toolbars. That is the new features and functionality. This is one of those things that uh, mostly it's been left to add-ons up till this point in time. And at this stage, I think add-ons are still doing it a bit better, uh, but that is definitely a step forward on the UI Front. They've been making some movement there. Uh, I'd be curious to hear what you think of this new U new UI layout. Now, another thing that they've done recently is changes with the way that package management works. And this is one of the new things. We now have feature sets. And the cool thing with Unity that they finally decided is that making these things completely optional was really problematic. So now Unity ships with the, the ERP and the HDRP and the standard pipeline. So a lot of the dependencies are already there. But if you want to go ahead and say that you're working on 2D games, well, now you can do is bring in a feature pack. And what it does is it brings in all of the packages that make sense. So let's say we're working on 3D world building. It will bring in Pro, Pro Builder, Pro Brush, and FBX Exporter. AR brings in all these various, various different things. So if you just want a quick get up and go, we now have these feature packs. So if you wanted to work in 2D, boom, just bring in those assets, just boom, install them, and they're in your project. Definitely a nice step forward. Gets rid of some of the dependency hell problems that we were starting to see creep up with Unity's heavy push towards the package management approach. And I like it. So now what we're going to do, jump over here and take a look at the release notes. I'm going to skim these for the most part because there's there's quite a bit to cover, and we're going to focus on sort of the biggest stuff. Now, I think some of that UI stuff is probably the biggest things right off the hop, so that's what we covered to start with. By the way, it is a uh, buggy release potentially, and this is a beta. This is not meant for production, but this is meant if you run into problems to let them know, and there is the ability via the help, report a bug. Uh, they also got a bit of a, if, if you add hashtag uh, beta21 and you win underscore NVIDIA to your bug report, uh, you can win an NVIDIA 3080 card. It's down here somewhere. Anyways, uh, they're like gold these days, so I guess that's better competition than normal because I know a lot of people are having trouble finding uh, GTX RTX 3090s out there right now, so they're giving away two of them for the best bug report. So, uh, or actually, I guess it's not best for bug report. I think it's uh, randomly chosen from bug reports. But anyways, if you are providing feedback, you can win a 3090 card. So we talked about earlier on, we've got the ability to float things in the UI. Uh, that's definitely going to be a bit of a game changer for people that aren't using plugins. We also got some improvements to the transform tool. This one's nice. You can now lock scaling. So uh, things will scale proportionally in all access and directories. If you've got in directions, sorry, if you have that in 
enabled. Uh, we also have improvements so that you can do math expressions directly in the inspector. This is always there. It's got more functionality now, such as you can now do square root of nine or to the two two x larger across the. I think that's power of two, but I'm not sure if that's two times or weird syntax there. Uh, we also have here the render component. Uh, if you pick a material, it now highlights it in the scene where it's selected. That is definitely a nice one. Uh, we've got some improvements to visual scripting, uh, really implementation level stuff there, so I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail on it. Uh, search now has a new table view to compare search results. Uh, package manager we saw that in action has a new feature set which is nice uh, if you're using an m1 mac uh, which are more and more in the wild now uh, there is now the apple silicon editor in beta uh, which is basically the unity editor built for uh, m1 chips uh, if you are running an m1 chip and you check this release out i'd be curious to hear how the performance is it seems like that uh, whole chipset is actually kind of uh, hitting it out of the park also would love to see them port their tooling to the ipad now that the ipad pros have the m1 chipset but I don't see it happening. A uh, new import activity window gives you kind of more details of what's happening with your inputs. So you got a little bit more, uh, you know, debugging abilities there. Uh, they've done their new, what was it called? Uh, something two point, pipeline 2.0, uh, where they've been kind of making file system changes on the back end, plumbing stuff that you don't normally see. Uh, well, we saw in, uh, performance speed ups there in this particular release. Uh, definitely nice. We've got optimizations to the build process, incremental C sharp script compilation there, a faster IL2 CPP build times that may generating less code, which is resulting in faster results. Uh, AI navigation experimental release package. It's kind of weird that this is in the programming section, but there is a new AI navigation experimental release package out there. Uh, programming has had some changes as well. C-sharp math has been improved from, from, from aggressive inlining. Async read manager, asset garbage collection code is now multi-threaded, six times faster GUID uh, hash generation, um, and then profiler improvements across the board. We've got a number of new platforms on board. Uh, there are four new APIs. This is one of those things that you've had to use um, oddly enough too. This is one of those things you would have thought would have included years ago. Uh, but you now have four APIs specific for dealing with multiple monitor support, and this is nice. So a uh, little thing here, but you can now get the main window position, display info, get display layout, and move the main window too. So you now have better support for multiple monitors. Thank goodness. Uh, then we've got support for Chrome OS with Android development environments. I don't know that anyone's using Chrome OS anymore, anymore, but anymore, 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 anymore. Uh, Android app bundle for asset building provides direct support for the new expansion. I thought they actually already did this, but... Um, that's the, the going forward way of delivering assets. It's, I think it's basically better patching. Uh, Adaptive Performance 3.0 is available there. This is a, kind of like a faster load uh, API uh, that you can use to make your, your games or apps on Android load up faster. Uh, thread configuration improvements, WebGL improvements, including Inscripted 2.0.19 gives faster build times and smaller WebAssembly output for WebGL targets. Uh, includes features for future support of the WebGL player in mobile web browsers, including gyroscope, accelerometer, gravity sensor, altitude sensor values for iOS and Android browsers. Uh, it's nice to see love for the WGL player, WebGL player. Uh, compressed audio support. We've got uh, uh, more choices for compressed texture formats. Updates to the Unity distribution portal. That's their way of pushing out to a number of different stores, I believe that was. Um, a number of cinematics improvements here. I'm not going to get into a, a ton of them here. Uh, one of the nice things is Python no longer requires you to install Python, and it supports Python 3.7 if you're using Python for Unity. But a lot of this stuff isn't really as game-oriented. Uh, it, it is, but it isn't. Uh, we got a lot to cover here, so we're going to do this in speedy mode. Now, both of the rendering pipelines have gotten a lot of love, plus we've got some stuff that is available in both pipelines. I wonder if they're going to regret splitting it because they're doing duplication of all of the work. You've got the HDRP, which is like the, you know, Xbox One and PlayStation 5 kind of target and high-end PCs. And then you've got the ERP or the Universal Render Pipeline, which is going to basically be the new standard pipeline. That's what you'd use for uh, run-of-the-mill PCs and... Um, you know, uh, low-end mobile devices, mid-range mobile devices, that kind of stuff. So on the HDRP side, we've got uh, volumetric clouds. There's a lot of new stuff being added, so I'm going to just go really quick here. Volumetric clouds, we're at it. We've got NVIDIA Deep Learning Super Sampling. This is basically using artificial intelligence to uh, upscale frames. Uh, so what you could do is render to kind of a lower resolution, let AI make it look a whole lot better. And we're getting 
huge frame rate results as a result of DLSS, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, they've also, this is part of a team up between GeForce, again, these these are like gold, the 3090s. I don't know if this is the same thing that they're doing for blog reports or not, um, details at the end. Uh, HDRP path tracer improves, added support for volumetric scattering to path trace scenes. Uh, Future also offers hair, fa um, fabrics, stacklet, so on. Uh, path tracing is basically sort of like a lightweight ray tracing. So if you're using RTX technology, path tracing is, is kind of where we're going more and more, actually for games these days. Uh, volumetric density volume format and blending improvements, HDRP decals uh, or decals placement. Uh, we've got streaming virtual texturing. Um, it's actually, I thought this was in in the past, but uh, we've got, oh, it is. It's, it, I think, look, we got just some, it's experimental feature, only available in HDRP. Uh, further improvements, yeah, so this is just an update, not uh, not something new. So I th again, I thought this was there already. That's an experimental feature for you, basically streaming and lowering, lowering the amount of GPU usage for these large textures that you're gonna stream in. Now onto the universal render pipeline, or as I say, the ERP. We now have a scene debug view mode that is like the standard pipeline or the built-in render pipeline, helps you debug uh, what's going on in your scene. We got reflection probe blending. Uh, re I have really, really have a lot of trouble saying this one. Reflection probe blending and box projection support. Uh, the ERP deferred renderer uses a rendering technique. Uh, okay, that's a weird, weird transition. Uh, okay, uh, we got a new uh, decal or decal system here, so you can do like bullets again. Uh, so does the HDRP. They just kind of did it differently, I'm guessing. Uh, we've got light layers, ERP light cookies, a technique for masking or filtering outgoing lights intensity to produce patterned illuminations. Uh, we've got several SSAO or um, screen space ambient occlusion improvements, uh, new converter framework for the built in um, render pipeline to ERP. That's nice to see. And in all honesty, I think the built-in will go away. ERP will become the new built-in. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to keep supporting built-in much farther, much farther into the future, especially once they get their tooling down right. So you're going to be able to transition your um, your built-in renderer to ERP at some point in the future. Interesting we'll, if we'll ever see a either ERP to HDRP or built into HDRP. Uh, it doesn't look like it at this point, but uh, ERP volume system update frequency allows you to... Uh, to optimize the performance of your volumes according to your content and target platform, and new samples in the package manager for the ERP that provide use cases of features by showcasing their configuration and practical use for onboarding and learning. That's nice to see. And then we got the SRP. This is basically a, these are functionalities that work on both the ERP and the HDRP. So this is just new all around. Uh, a new lens flare system. So we can go back to like the era of Babylon 5 where we have abuse the hell out of lens flares. Uh, nice to see though. Uh, light anchors, uh, we've got GPU light mapping, uh, space tiling. Uh, the enlightened real-time uh, global illumination is now available on more platforms, including the new M1 chips, as well as PlayStation 5 and the Series XS platforms. Uh, Workflow improvements in the standard render pipeline. Uh, for this iteration, the focus is mainly on lining the light and camera components between the ERP and the HDRP. I wonder how annoyed they're gonna be at maintaining these two separate rendering pipelines. It's gonna be interesting there. Uh, we got a number of authoring tool changes. So new terrain sculpting brushes, erosion height map based tools, uh, material painting controls improvements, uh, quality of life improvements in the terrain tools. It's nice to see they're, they're giving the terrain tools some love. It still blows my mind that for like, until like a year and a half ago, there was nobody on that team. Uh, Speed Tree 8 vegetation, so they updated their version of Speed Tree support. Uh, refactored the Shader Graph integration, allows you to use any HDRP shader mode with Shader Graph on lit, lit, hair, fabric, and so on to render primitives in the Visual Effects Graph. Change replaces the Visual Effect Graph in the Shader Graph, which is consequently deprecated. Uh, so Sign Distance Field Baker, uh, we actually just looked, checked out a new tool for this Magic uh, CSG, which is using Sign Distance Field. That seems to be a place where we're going more and more often. Um, it's a way of basically um, describing a volume around uh, a surface um, instead of using like a polygon hull. hull. Uh, structured graphics uh, buffer support, improved ERP support, shader graph improvements, including uh, shader keyword limit has effectively been uh, removed. That's nice. It didn't really make a lot of sense before. Uh, shader lab package dependency syntax was updated. Uh, UI Toolkit can now be used as an alternative to create runtime UI for games and applications. Well, that's actually pretty nice. Uh, and then we got a number of improvements in the 2D world. So several ERP-2D render improvements can be found in this release. Uh, new scene view debug mode. Uh, we've got sprite mask features been adjusted to work correctly in the SRP. Uh, we've got render new rendering features. 2D lights are now integrated into the Light Explorer. 2D shadows are being optimized. Some of these improvements are implemented in this release, including refactoring work, rendering shadows to a single channel, and per light shadow coloring. 
uh, sorry, culling, uh, 2D light texture nodes are in, so 2D lights can be accessed in the shader graph for 2D nodes. Uh, VFX graph now supports 2D unlit shaders, 2D uh, URP default template has been added. Uh, that's nice, more templates is always a nice thing. Uh, Sprite Atlas V2 with folder support, uh, 2D animations updated, including bone colors, 2D tile map improvements, 2D physics improvements. And again, you can win a 3090 card. Uh, I can't win anything ever, so I'm not gonna go into the details, but I will link to this article. So if you wanna get into the details of how you can actually go about winning that card, they are there, rules are there, everything else is there. Uh, submit bugs, you make them happy, and maybe you'll win something. Uh, another thing to uh, point out is there's also a new set of starter asset packages. This was uh, quite a while ago. So this was uh, 10 or 11 days ago. I didn't do a video on it because it's, it's pretty small news overall. Uh, but we got new character controllers, input systems, cinema machine, uh, visual assets, and um, such for getting you up and going, which is always nice. Uh, having easier onboarding is always a good thing. So there are a new set of uh, starter asset packages out there for people using Unity. Nothing specifically to do with this 2020.2 uh, release, but definitely a new one nonetheless. So that is it. That is Unity 2021.2. Again, the big thing is we've got these, these UI changes, but a ton of things at the... Uh, uh, on the rendering side of things, quite a few new features in there. So they're back to adding new things and not as much about the stability. Uh, and you know what, it, it really shows. This is the buggish release I have seen in a while, but I'd be curious to see what you think. If you've checked it out, what do you think of this new UI approach, these overlays? Uh, and frankly, how have you found the stability overall? Do you like to see them focusing on features again, or did you like them focusing more on usability polish and making things work well? I can see how they need both. You got to keep up with the Joneses, but you also have to have a product that's actually useful to people. So interesting to see how they balance that. But let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.